started out, grew up in Mumbai, went to college in Mumbai and was working in the theater when I applied for a, grad, a postgraduate degree in the US. Unfortunately, just before I was due to leave, my father passed away and so plans had to change. I therefore decided to take an internship um, with a production house, uh, UTV in Mumbai, and was working there assisting the directors on, uh, on shoots. When uh, the owner of the company, Ronnie Skruwala, asked me whether I would be up for um, uh, a stint in Singapore. And this is way back in 1995. Uh, and I kind of packed my bags and said, okay, this is a great adventure and wound up in Singapore on my own, first employee for the company here. And they were a production house looking to expand in the Southeast Asia region. So uh, we hired a team. We uh, set up production facilities, uh, made some shows for local broadcasters and regional broadcasters. And I was enjoying that, but I was, it was really much more of a business development role. And I really felt like I've always felt throughout my career that I have a strong passion for content and business both. Uh, I wanted to do more on the content side. So when I got the opportunity to work for Fremantle, which was a um, format owner, like we made game show, they make game shows. Uh, in Indonesia, I moved to Jakarta. Um, I spent a couple of great years in Jakarta, uh, had the adventure of my lifetime. I wanted to move for the West, so I went backpacking first for nine months uh, across Asia and Europe. Wound up in London, said, right, I need to get a job. <laughs> um, Interestingly, with a lot of passion for stories that I wanted to tell from Asia, I would rock up at the BBC and places like that and try to meet people and say, hey, I've got shows I want to talk about, but um, not much luck. So I picked up a lot of freelance work uh, and, you know, um, was doing that for a while before I saw an advertisement for a job at the Discovery Channel in the US. And they wanted someone with international production experience. I applied online. They flew me to DC for an interview. And uh, next thing I knew, I was in the US in Silver Spring, Maryland, making uh, and, you know, being part of the content team for unscripted specials and series for Discovery. So everything from engineering marvels to lions in South Africa, great stuff, worked with amazing creative teams. During this time, I also had the um, great privilege of working with Anthony Bourdain and shaping his show, No Reservations for the Travel Channel uh, and working with a lot of amazing creative people. But uh, then did my MBA there, uh, had my kids there and we decided it was time to move closer to home. So we moved back to Singapore. Uh, that was the second time in uh, 2007. Uh, and spent a year here, uh, again, looking to create my own content and work with great partners in the region and got tapped for a uh, startup job in Mumbai again. So we thought, why not go all the way back east, uh, moved with the kids to Mumbai again in 2008. Uh, this was working for a media startup called What's On India um, and then Two years into that, I got uh, again asked if I would join BBC's, BBC India. BBC there is just uh, working. So this particular role was working with the production business, making shows for other uh, um, platforms. So we made uh, dance shows like Dancing with the Stars. Uh, we made soaps. We made quiz and game shows, reality shows, any number of um, series like that. Um, I spent 10 years with the BBC, which were a great, fantastic adventure, and I learned a lot. And I went from um, producer to running the India business, which included channels. We launched Sony BBC Earth as a joint venture with Sony uh, as a linear channel. Um, then I moved to Singapore with them and also took on Southeast Asia. So I was heading up the businesses for BBC for Southeast Asia and India. And uh, having a great time working with great content and great colleagues and just felt like somehow linear tv was going to be on uh, <laughs> on the wane um, i think you know there were signs already uh, certainly but i felt like it would be a good thing to learn what digital or vod content is so when i got the opportunity to join netflix i jumped on it 
um and spent i've spent i spent the last year at netflix with uh southeast asia and australia where i was tasked with all the content for those markets so setting up the teams uh organizing our content strategy uh licensing content producing shows and really uh again learning how that part of the world and business of media works which was great uh and one year later i you know uh decided that i'll do uh my own thing again uh third time in my career so uh looking forward to see how that develops it's just very early stages at the moment i'm right in the middle of one of the biggest pivots certainly in the media industry which is the movement away from linear channels like watching tv with your remote to uh streaming platforms and that's underpinning that is the concept that you know we want content whenever we want it wherever we want it uh so for me i mean that's that's a manifestation of the underlying change in consumer behavior uh which is the desire for convenience um so i would say one of the biggest uh movements in in uh, all industries you know i'm in the midst of it in media but it's happening in many other industries as well where convenience the for instance online shopping you know um sure pandem the pandemic has helped accelerate that but that's been um this requirement of consumers to get what they want when they want it um is 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 more the global trend that i would say dr- should drive business decisions uh and businesses that are able to capitalize and understand this desire for convenience um uh, and coupled with it probably customization something that is personal to me but um also available whenever i want it um it is i think one of the big global trends um the other one is you know uh, i'm hugely encouraged by it because i think there is much greater consciousness about the state of our planet and i think we will see uh more and more businesses firstly built around climate change and working in a world where uh consumers are more conscious of their responsibility to the environment and the world and the future generations uh i see that in young students uh in schools i see that in new business startups that are, that come to me uh this desire to do not just something for profit but something for profit that's also good for the planet um so definitely see see an increased uh, awareness about climate change been asked this question many times so i've got that answer actually <laughs> um and it it remains the same uh, as it has for some years now which is work hard with integrity and passion those are my three uh, top qualities there are many others but if you you know and and i think depending on what you're looking for in your career as a young person you may be on a different continuum uh, of your own set of uh, values and self aware and you know sense of self awareness but for me when i'm looking at young people i want people who first of all are passionate about what they what they're doing now this doesn't mean you have to you know want to invent the next <laughs> tesla it just means that you are you can put your heart and your mind and your hours into what you do because you care to do it well um the second is integrity um integrity not you know i'm not just talking about uh you know being honest i'm saying want to do something to a high standard you know want to stand behind what you do uh want to be honest about your failures be honest about sharing your successes uh so that's my interpretation on integrity and working hard i think it's just really really important to put in the hours particularly when you're learning i, I mean i look back at my career and my early jobs i worked 7 days a week 18 hours a day sometimes um but i realized pretty soon that because i did that i learned that much more because i spent that much more time with my craft for example i i was able to edit better uh is so in fact if you work harder you you're you're giving yourself an edge over competition later in the career, in your career so work hard with integrity and passion for me you know my greatest uh sort of moments of achievement or feeling like i've done something have 
have been around either creating content or building teams that create content. Um, and then I've reflected on that and thought about, okay, what is it that makes me um, particularly proud of our successes? And I think for individuals, uh, knowing yourself is the first step. I think it, 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 it takes, it takes uh, maybe uh, successes and failures both uh, on a personal and professional front. It takes parenting. In my case, it's taken parenting <laughs> for me to know myself better. Uh, but know what you want because the world is infinite and possibilities are infinite. Uh, and, you know, our own potential, I think, is infinite. Uh, if, we, if we want something, we should know that we can do it. Uh, but know what we really want first. So I think self-awareness um, is, for me, one of those. Uh, the other is courage. I mean, when I look at when I look back at the things I've done, you know, moving from one country to another without really thinking about it too much, having uh, the courage to fight for ideas, having the courage to stand up for what's right, has held me in good stead um, and has given me um, a lot of a lot of supporters and friends over the years. So um, I think having courage is another key value for me. And finally, a sense of humor. <laughs> I, 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 I really do believe that I have the capacity and have uh, and believe in teams and people who can just go right. OK, that, you know, through the tough times, through the good times, if you're not having fun, what's the point? So have a sense of humor. <laughs>